what we have here is our cabinet on a ramp and we have the person who's going to try to push it now uh, these there are a few key points here that we need to pay attention to first before playing with the simulation let's consider the forces acting on it first think of the gravitational force which is in blue here it is going to always be pointing towards the center of the earth it's not going to be pointing towards the ramp it's going to point towards the center of the earth the gravitational force is due to the earth and the fact that we put the cabinet on a ramp is not going to change where the earth is so this one is going to point always along the vertical towards the center of the earth that's a key point that's an important point now the normal force like we mentioned before it's here in purple it's always going to be perpendicular to the surface this is my surface perpendicular to it that's what we see there in purple now if we make a free body diagram uh, by the way, first, before I, go, uh, before I go on, before we talk about the friction, now, the gravitational force is along the vertical. The normal force is not along the vertical anymore. It's perpendicular to the, uh, to the ramp, so it has part of it is along the vertical and part of it is along the horizontal. It is acting along both directions, um, but it's not strictly along the vertical while the gravitational force is strictly along the vertical. Now, if we draw a free body diagram, trying to draw the forces, um, uh, so if we draw the vertical this way, the horizontal, whatever is uh, uh, perpendicular to the vertical, now you notice that my F sub N is not going to be along the vertical, like we expect it not to be. Now, when you focus on this a little bit, what you notice, F sub N does not balance. Uh, let me retract that. Uh, let me retract that and go to the simulation uh, just to ensure that we get this straight. Okay, here's the simulation. I'm going to rewind it. Uh, the nice feature that this one has has slow motion. So, uh, uh, oops. So this is what we have right now. The cabinet sitting on the ramp, not moving, not accelerating, nothing is happening to it. So what that tells us, it tells us, it tells us that the forces must be balanced all the forces together must be balanced in other words we have no unbalanced force no total force no net force okay let's go back to uh, the presentation okay so the forces are balanced now so what's going to balance for us f sub g what's going to balance it is going to be contributions from both these forces both of these forces are acting not along the horizontal not along the vertical along both the horizontal and the vertical each one of them is acting along both directions now the red one the friction force friction force is going to act always parallel to the ramp so it's going to act either up or down. Here we have it up. We'll have to discuss in a second why. But um, so we have that. It is acting parallel to the ramp, but that's not the horizontal. The ramp is making an angle with the horizontal. That's why we see it making an angle. So it's acting both horizontal and vertical. The normal force is also acting that way. Because of that, both of them are going to be, a, a, be able to help balance out F sub G along the vertical. Now, what about the horizontal? F sub G does not have any contribution along the horizontal. 
F sub n, however, has a small contribution along the horizontal. Now, since we don't have acceleration, that tells us that it must be balanced by something. What's balancing it in this case? It is the horizontal part of the friction force. That's why we know that the friction force is pointing up as opposed to down, because it's balancing that part of F sub n. Okay? Uh, this is one situation. Let's look at this other situation, where we apply a force, but the force that we apply is not large. So we still have no acceleration. Our forces are still balanced. So it's the same situation as we had before, except now, it's not very visible here, but we have two forces that are acting at an angle, since the push is parallel to the incline as well, both forces, forces are parallel to each other and pointing upwards. The rest is not changing, except now we know that what's going to balance F sub G is going to be part of F sub N and part of the applied force and part of the friction force. And what's going to balance F sub N along the horizontal is going to be part of F sub A and part of F sub F. Okay? Let's go on to another case, an even larger force. Now the story changes a little bit. If my force is large enough, and I still ha don't have motion, still don't have acceleration, I mean, I still don't have acceleration, my forces are still balanced, but something has to balance the excess force that's given by this. So what happens? The curious thing is, my static friction force is now pointing in the opposite direction. That's the main reason I did all of this. The static friction force, you cannot always easily predict its direction. You have to analyze the situation to try to figure out uh, what's its direction. Now, of course, in this case, if we apply a large enough applied force, we are going to eventually get the cabinet to accelerate, and in that case, we get something like this. So my applied force and my friction force, eventually, they are not going to balance out, so I'm going to have an acceleration along that direction. Now, this free body diagram is fine, but it's not really great or does not make the math easy for solving problems. Usually, and we are not doing this complicated math in this course, I'm just mentioning it here, but usually we choose the free body diagra diagram such that we choose the horizontal axis parallel uh, to the ramp and the vertical axis perpendicular to the ramp. So then the story will worry about balancing some other way. Uh, mathematically or physically, it's this, physically it's the same situation. Mathematically, the math is a little easier if we draw it the way I just drew it. Okay, let's go to the simulation and see what I was talking about. So we'll put it in slow motion. No applied force. So no up, uh, now we have 100 Newton applied force. So my friction force is still pointing that way. You can look here as well. Now, 300 Newton applied force. The friction suddenly switched direction. 500 Newtons. And now we start having an acceleration. And we have a net force uh, in the upward direction. That finishes this part about free body diagrams and ramps, normals, friction, and the gravitational force, several things we have seen here.